Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm uh, Luis uh, Pereira da Silva, the Deputy General Manager of the Bank for International Settlements, and it is uh, my pleasure to chair this uh, panel in the Finance uh, in Common event on how to make the most of uh, public uh, development uh, banks. Very important and timely uh, subject. It is my pleasure to uh, have here as a panelist, Juta Urpilainen, who is the Commissioner for International Partnerships at the European uh, Commission. Hello, Juta. To have also uh, Rosa Maria Sanchez Yebra Alonso, Vice uh, Governor, Council of uh, Europe Development uh, Bank. Hello, Rosa. And Hello. to have also uh, Luki uh, Afilman, the Director General of Budget and Risk Management at the uh, Ministry of uh, Finance in uh, Indonesia. Uh, good evening, Luki. Good morning. And uh, last but not Jakarta. least, uh, to have also uh, Gunter Braunig, the Chief Executive Officer at uh, KFW. Uh, we will have uh, a session of about uh, 45 uh, uh, minutes, and uh, we will start uh, with a, uh, a generic question for uh, each of you. Um, of course, I think we all understand that, that uh, public uh, development banks have been a, a very important uh, actor to address major development uh, challenges globally, but also regionally. Uh, they are key actors uh, to uh, the achievement of the uh, SDGs, and uh, I'm sure that we all understand that they can be a very powerful instrument to address uh, some of the uh, burning issues uh, related to uh, climate change and how to mitigate the risks associated uh, with, with that. When we speak of uh, public development banks, comes to mind the fact that they are powerful instruments that can help the other uh, macroeconomic policies that have been activated uh, to fight uh, climate change, such as uh, the elements of uh, uh, monetary and prudential policies that uh, some jurisdictions are using, but also, of course, uh, some of uh, the uh, uh, instruments that have been used by fiscal policies in, uh, in, many, in many governments. So perhaps I would start uh, with uh, each of the uh, panelists about their views on uh, this uh, question of how they think public development banks, perhaps using their own experience, can be helpful in this uh, uh, in the current uh, circumstances what they can bring uh, to the issue of uh, achieving at the same time uh, SDGs but also contributing uh, to uh, fight uh, uh, climate uh, uh, change. Perhaps uh, uh, I could start uh, with uh, Juta to express her views on uh, this uh, question in uh, an intervention, Jutta, of about two to three minutes. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> let me start by expressing my appreciation for being part of this um, historical gathering of, of public development banks. I think it, it marks an important moment in our joint efforts for, for the global recovery, like you uh, just described. I am delighted to take part in this panel as, as the EU strongly believes in a close collaboration with public development banks. Even before the pandemic hit, the EU has started encouraging development-sensitive investment. The EU external investment plan encourages public and private investors to bring more investment into Africa and EU neighboring countries. 
and in doing so, to help those countries generate jobs, boost economies, and offer people a brighter future. Through the financial arm of, of the plan, the European Fund for Sustainable Development, we provide financing for development projects and programs through guarantees and blending projects, in addition to the EU's development cooperation and budget support. And this has helped us be reactive uh, when the COVID-19 crisis started. Working together as, as the Team Europe, the EU, member states, but also financial institutions, we have, for example, very quick, quickly mobilized almost 36 billion euros to, response, uh, to respond to the COVID-19 crisis in our partner countries. As part of this, the EU reoriented all guarantees to counter the consequences of the pandemic and to come out of the crisis with green, digital, equal and resilient recovery. So through these agreements, our partner financial institutions can now use these guarantees to generate billions of euros in much needed investment across Africa and the EU neighborhood. They will directly support people who face several challenges because of the COVID-19, whether small businesses owners or self-employed women entrepreneurs or businesses led by young people. So in fact, today I am very pleased to announce the conclusion of 10 new guarantee agreements with partners for investments in Africa and EU neighborhood countries. By concluding these milestone guarantee agreements today and finalizing the implementation of the external investment plan, Team Europe is continuing to lead the global response to COVID-19. So we definitely must build back better and stronger future together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Juta. Uh, Rosa Maria, um, can you add also from your, uh, your perspective, uh, your views on the important role of uh, public development banks at this particular juncture? Yes, well, good morning. I'm also delighted to, to be part of this, uh, of this session, which is very relevant for the CV, since the CV is a European Development Bank with a social mandate, uh, strengthening social cohesion in Europe uh, with a special focus on integrating the most vulnerable population. The bank operates in 42 European countries. Um, to fulfill this mandate, the bank finances uh, projects with a high social value, integrating climate change considerations and environmental sustainability in all our activities. The crisis has showed that the current economic model has produced unbalanced growth, widening inequalities and negative environmental impacts. And in particular, it has showed the lack of resilience of the health, education and other social sectors due to a persistent underinvestment in social infrastructure. Um, the CB has responded in a record time to the crisis, supporting its member countries, continuing providing healthcare uh, services and the continuation of jobs and businesses. We have adapted our lending instruments and put in place a fast track uh, procedure to approve COVID related loans worth 3.6 billion euros in scarcely two, three months, which is an impressive task uh, compared to a total volume of 4 billion euros in a normal year. This shows the uh, capacity of the CB or the NDBs and all PDBs in general to react and mobilize funds uh, in emergency situations. But beyond responding to emergency situations, as important as this is, we see ourselves uh, playing a counter-cyclical role in supporting the road to a resilient, uh, sustainable and inclusive um, recovery, addressing the social inequalities that have unemployment at the center, the investment gap in social infrastructure and environmental challenges.
We think that PDB should act as catalyzers of transformational, transformational and impact investment and striving for a, a development model more around human well-being, health, social inclusion and the preservation of the planet. At CB, we start, I stand ready to partner with our member countries, local actors and all stakeholders to uh, prepare and to enhance the long-term resilience of uh, our societies in the long term. Thank you. Muchas gracias, uh, Rosa Maria. Uh, let's turn to uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 Luki because uh, you are now in a, in a different time zone, and of course you have an Asian experience, and of course you are in the Ministry of Finance, which uh, sometimes oversees the activities uh, of uh, development banks. So, from your perspective, both for, from someone who oversees and also from Asia, what could, could you sort of bring as a message where there is this cooperation and there is this need for uh, development institutions to act on SDGs and uh, climate change? Thank you, Luis. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me on this very prestigious panel. So, me perhaps um, representing the other side of table, not only uh, I'm also, we are also client or user of these PDBs actually. So we know due to the pandemic COVID-19, many things have been changing. People, businesses, economies, all levels, domestic, local, regional, global, have to adapt with this new situation and challenges that is unprecedented and unpredictable. So the million dollar question for to all of us is, is it a new normal? What will stay, what will change when the pandemic is over? I think the concern should also apply to PDB, public development banks. I still firmly believe that PDB still play and will play a critical role in facilitating governments around the world to address various shared concerns and to achieve universal goals such as poverty, inequality, prosperity, and of course, sustainability. However, urgencies, challenges might have to be adjusted. And as usual, later on, execution, delivery will even be more challenging. Dealing with this pandemic COVID-19, governments around the world, including Indonesia, have to make extraordinary and breakthrough decisions and policies. Mm -hmm in the context of substance as well as speed, while at the same time still respecting aspect of accountability, governance, as well as sustainability. And for fiscal policies, this is very obvious because of this lockdown, social distancing policy, revenue collection has been going down significantly. And on the other side, the expenditure side, our spending has been increased again quite significantly or in in short that all of a sudden that we are facing we have these financing needs all of a sudden increase significantly and we as government have to be creative innovative in fulfilling these additional huge financing needs and of course but potential source coming from pdbs and we are very thankful we have very good and expertise relationship with our development partners, both multilateral and bilateral agencies. What I'm trying to say here, that this good relationship that is based on trust and mutual benefit principles is even more useful during the economic hardship like we have now. So we have good support as well as flexibility that we, are, that we need during this pandemic COVID-19. And going forward, for us, the issues of sustainability and climate change remain priority. That is something that PDB should be working more seriously and extensively. But the question that is still relevant, what I explained before, is how PDBs, how public development banks, achieve those goals in new normal, in the post-pandemic era. That is something that we should be discussing in more uh, extensive and extensively uh, in the next uh, couple, couple of minutes here. Back to you, Luis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Luki. 
Let me turn uh, now to, uh, to, uh, to, to Gunther. And of course, uh, we, we know the importance of uh, uh, development uh, agencies. We, we know the, the history of uh, KFW. Uh, so Gunther, on this, uh, on this front, and uh, given what uh, Loki just said, the, the need to sort of act fast against uh, pandemics, uh, of course, uh, globally, uh, regionally, uh, what sort of perspective could you bring to uh, the usefulness of uh, the role of development agencies and also development banks uh, in reaching the uh, SDGs, but also uh, fighting COVID and fighting uh, climate change? Well, thank you, Louis. Uh, definitely, this year is a corona year, and it uh, illustrates how effective uh, public development banks can be in a policy reaction uh, with respect to, to corona. Um, when you take the case of KFW, we have been tripling our lending volume in Germany uh, because we are part of uh, uh, an important set of measures of the German government to fight the economic consequences consequences of, uh, of Corona. So um, one key uh, element for our success has been that uh, the, I think the very quick response of the national governments together with the EU Commission with respect to uh, the temporary framework on state aid and uh, also our digital infrastructure with the German commercial banks to put our uh, lending programs uh, into action and we have been providing liquidity to more than 90,000 corporates in Germany. On top of that, we have been running a 5 billion uh, euro program uh, for developing countries to help them in the corona crisis. But as Luki said, the, the big question is um, what is going to be the new normal when we have hopefully fought successfully uh, the corona crisis? And I believe then the question of sustainable finance where have we have traditionally been very active is coming uh, back to, uh, to force. Uh, the question of the, the carbon neutrality journey that we are all embarking on uh, will, um, will be more visible and this is going to be the new normal and I think it's going to be the new normal anti, until 2050. So thank you. Back to you, uh, Louis. Thank, thank you, uh, Gunther. Let me uh, perhaps speak on, on, on your last point, which is the need to consider precisely some of these uh, uh, longer term goals uh, that are associated with uh, a new normal that would sort of make uh, the world uh, a more sustainable place in terms of uh, marching towards uh, carbon neutrality and fighting uh, climate change. So, of course, we know that there are uh, short-term instruments, uh, uh, macroeconomic policies that uh, can be uh, uh, mobilized, but there is a need to think of in a longer-term horizon, and that's perhaps uh, where uh, public institutions can have this uh, longer-term horizon to finance and to uh, think about uh, the initiatives that will be uh, more uh, uh, effective. Uh, is there a sort of a way where uh, this, for example, can be uh, uh, sought with uh, your experience in, uh, in the public sector, in public development institutions? And uh, do you see a need, for example, to combine, of course, uh, these uh, longer term approach this capacity to mobilize uh, long and medium term finance to green financing instruments and at the same time coordinating with uh, other actors which seems to be also a, a useful uh, uh, tool to address uh, these these global issues so let me see if uh, uh, one of you perhaps want to to start this part of yes. the, uh, the conversation uh, perhaps uh, go to yourself or, or Juta? Just very, uh, very quickly, Luis, um, two, two points here. <clears throat> One is uh, our initiative, uh, which we call the Clean Ocean Initiative. We put together in 2018, together with uh, European Investment Bank and Agence Française de Développement, uh, in order to, uh, to finance long-term projects uh, in order to avoid uh, waste getting into the oceans. So very concrete um, joint initiative of uh, important public development banks and Casa Depositi and also 
also eco joined into this initiative which has already brought together 1.3 billion in projects so far but also i think uh, the financial sector as a whole has a big role to play in this carbon neutrality action uh, the way how financial flows get into green investments is going to be very important going forward and uh, i think public development banks are pioneers in the area of uh, sustainable finance they have a lot of ex technical expertise uh, at least uh, at kfw we have that and we can bring this technical expertise into the discussion to formulate uh, definitions on green finance and this should be taken into account of course thank you Gunther. so if i if i look at your term green finance comes immediately to mind the initiatives that uh, we are seeing uh, emerging uh, in europe in terms of uh, uh, a green uh, new new deal uh, initiatives to finance the transitions towards uh, a carbon neutral uh, uh, um, society. Uh, Jutta, do you want to uh, to say something about about that and how uh, this is shaping up? And perhaps also later, Rosa Maria, about uh, how do you see this from your uh, perspective of uh, a financial institution? Perhaps starting with uh, with Jutta. Yes. Thank you. I, I think it's uh, it's very easier easy to to agree with the uh, previous speakers that um. It's crucial for all of us, uh, and of course, uh, of our future generations, to adopt a sustainable uh, growth model that is green, digital, socially just, and resilient. And uh, from the European Union perspective, um, of course, we see the public development banks uh, as a key partners in, in this approach. And in order to re release global recovery, uh, will be fundamental for public development banks and all actors to have a clear mandates, strategies, and targets to commit politically to environmental, financial, and socially sustainable solutions. By partnering with and making the most of public development banks, full range of capacities, the EU, so the European Union, can fully support partner countries in the implementation of their national determinant contributions, so NDCs, and long-term strategies aligned with the Paris Agreement and the SDGs. However, the large-scale de deployment of sustainable solutions will not materialize quickly unless public development banks are fully committed to help closing the financing gap. So I still want to underline how important I see the role uh, as uh, the role of the uh, public development banks. So this is the true for sustainable investment, including in areas such as, as human development, social inclusion, and sustainable health systems. Um, my personal concern, and maybe I, I will share it with you in, in this occasion, my personal concern is that how strongly the international community is, is still committed to sustainable development goals. I think it, it will be the huge uh, question after the COVID-19 crisis, that is there still a strong commitment to achieve those goals by the year 2030? I personally hope that there is this commitment, but we then, of course, need to understand that it does mean that we also need to increase the funding for our partner countries in order to help them to achieve those goals. And of course, also from that perspective, I see uh, the public development bank's role very important. But um, this is my comment, and that unfortunately, uh, I need to very soon leave the, another event, but it was a great honor to participate in this panel. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your contribution, Jutta. <laughs> Let me perhaps uh, turn uh, now to uh, to Rosa Maria, uh, uh, see a bit of her perspective. 
but I would like also after that to uh, to hear from uh, uh, let's say a more um, uh, developing country perspective and I will ask uh, uh, Luki to to chip in and since I am also originally also from an, an emerging market I might also have uh, my, my own views on that so so uh, Rosa Maria um, on uh, on this uh, idea uh, that, that uh, Jutta just uh, uh, mentioned, what would be your take? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, from the perspective of a social bank, bank uh, we, we, of course, uh, think that this is a decisive decade to invest in the 2030 agenda. Uh, SDGs uh, provide the right roadmap for a sustainable development and, as such, uh, should be guiding investment decisions. And they are perfectly compatible with the Paris Agreement goals. So, from this perspective, we think that SDGs and the Green Transition Goals uh, need to be integrated in the PDP's strategic and operational frameworks, and they should be addressed green and social issues uh, at the same level uh, in an integrated manner. Uh, we think PDP should prioritize those projects uh, with a high development impact, both social and environmental, and they should be more impact focused. Impact should matter more than volume. At CB, for example, we have identified key, uh, 10 key SDGs that are more uh, in line and more relevant to our mandate and nice of action, uh, and we have integrated them in our operational framework so that we will be able to assess our contribution uh, in achieving these SDGs from the project at result point of view and then at portfolio level. Uh, also, we think that uh, PDBs have a responsibility and the capacity to set standards on public uh, on public goals, on global public goals, and hence pave, pave the way for the private sector to follow suit. On the governance issue, we, we think that their uh, governance should be strengthened not only to ensure uh, a higher development impact, but also greater accountability uh, and greater transparency, and of course the highest standards in reporting and disclosure, disclosure practices. And, uh, in this respect, uh, uh, this includes taking into account the recently approved green taxonomy and supporting the development of a social taxonomy in the future. Um, to fulfill their ambitious mandate, uh, we think that PDB should have to be adequately capitalized and empowered to develop innovative financial solutions from guarantee schemes, crowding in the private sector, and assuming more risk uh, wherever uh, necessary. And this is more the case for social banks that are meant to address market failures in the social sector. And finally, we think that the mandates of PDB should build on uh, our complementarities uh, to achieve the highest development impact possible and also incentivize smart partnerships to greater alignment in achieving uh, common goals. This is uh, my contribution uh, here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Rosa Maria. So uh, I, I, I do understand that, yes, there is a need to have a reflection on uh, the, the special uh, nature uh, of uh, development uh, uh, institutions and uh, those who have uh, uh, social goals in terms of uh, uh, their uh, their structure, their uh, their mandates, but perhaps coming back to the point that was mentioned uh, about uh, setting targets and commitments uh, to uh, SDGs uh, and also uh, uh, targets uh, to fight uh, climate change. And turning now to uh, perhaps uh, a developing country uh, perspective, uh, look, we, we, uh, uh, me and you, we, we come from uh, emerging markets and we know that uh, there could be, of course, commitments, but there is always the difficulty to finance some of the actions that are necessary to transition from a uh, uh, high carbon uh, economy towards a uh, lower carbon uh, economy. And this financing is sometimes uh, more difficult uh, to, uh, to mobilize, even if, uh, and I will turn back <coughs> to Google in a while, uh, advanced economies, development agencies can certainly contribute uh, for uh, financing this transition. What are your thoughts about the need to reconcile commitments to uh, local goals, to global goals, and at the same time, the availability of resources to finance uh, the transition 
uh, and to combat uh, climate change and achieve uh, SDGs uh, in your region, for example, in Asia. Thank you, Luis. First of all, Indonesia is very committed to green development, this climate change, SDG, sustainable development. We have ratified Paris Agreement in 2016 and submitted our NDC, Nationally Determined Contribution, with quite ambitious target. But as you mentioned, uh, in achieving those goals, there, there are always two sides of coins. The first side is talking about what to do. We're talking about programs, we're talking about projects. And to pursue this greener development, for example, we know in most cases that needs better technology, more advanced technology, which is in turn perhaps is quite costly. So that's why the other side of coin talking about financing, it's also become more and more important. So for Indonesia, the concrete example, we have issued for the first time what's so called global green sukuk back in 2018. And this is the third year already. So we, already, we always issue every year, so the third time. And so far, the total amount has been issued for this global green sukuk has, uh, has uh, reached about 2.75 billion US dollar. This is the first sovereign green sukuk in the world. So this is Indonesia has become what's so called pioneer for, uh, for this uh, sovereign green sukuk. Indonesia has received also consent for funding proposal amounting around 103, 103 million US dollars from GCF as part of the Red Plus scheme. So however, from our experience, that I think we as community, as the ecosystem, we have to design a system in such a way that can provide some incentive for countries, for corporations to issue more and more, let's say these thematic bonds like green bond, blue bonds, or uh, sustainability bonds, okay? So again, to be frank, from our experience, three issuances of this global green to cook, to be honest, first, yes, we are able to attract, to diversify, to broaden our investor base, in this case, attracting green investors. So for example, in terms of the, in terms of statistic, we are able to attract 34% of total green investor for our, uh, uh, this uh, sukuk, uh, green sukuk. However, the second, the second part is talking about, is there any uh, pricing benefit? that so far that we haven't seen it yet okay so again this is very straightforward question that if we want to attract if we want to invite more and more issuers corporation sovereign to issue these thematic bonds i think investor should be able to provide more incentive slash reward for them so that they can also they are they are attracted to issue this uh, uh, kind of thematic bond uh, alternative uh, financing schemes. That's that's for me, Luis. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Luki. From, uh, from what you were uh, saying and, and some of the other uh, interventions, um, I, I I see a sort of a conversion. The convergence of, uh, uh, of course, commitments to achieving uh, SDGs and to uh, uh, be uh, uh, much more aware of the importance of uh, fighting uh, climate uh, climate change, while at the same time uh, there is uh, uh, innovations in the financial industry towards. Uh, uh, the uh, new types of instruments that can finance uh, the, uh, the the transition, such as uh, uh, green bonds, the willingness, uh, as Gunter uh, and Juta, and also to some extent uh, Rosa Maria was pointing out, uh, to to mobilize uh, additional uh, resources uh, for for that, 
So, um, uh, and at the same time, uh, the willingness of some private investors to, to consider these uh, new instruments. Should you sort of, uh, uh, if we combine all this, uh, see that uh, there is a sort of uh, implicit uh, coordination of uh, goodwill that is beginning to take place? And uh, should we sort of proceed uh, uh, in this uh, coordination with the sort of a dialogue between uh, uh, all the actors that are stakeholders uh, in terms of achieving SDGs and fighting climate change. And it's the public sector, the private sector, civil society, development agencies. How would you sort of, this, this forum is actually uh, a, a, very, uh, a very important uh, initiative in that sense. Would you say that uh, this, this coordination is beginning to take place and, uh, and should proceed? Yes. Uh, who wants yes. to, um, to sort of chip yes. in? Uh, Gunter, maybe uh, you, you want to yes, say please, something uh, about that? First of all, I don't know whether Yuta is still with us, but I wanted to say we are really committed to the SDGs. Already we can map our entire portfolio to uh, the 17 SDGs, and this has been one important milestone for us. When it comes to uh, our cooperation with uh, developing countries, we are always discussing uh, with our partners in order to identify uh, projects that can lead uh, a country into that transition to carbon neutral. For example, projects for renewable energies is one of uh, our fields we are very active, uh, I think also in Indonesia, by the way. And, uh, and also to your third point, Luis, um, what is the private sector doing? Uh, and we're getting more and more calls from uh, sustainab sustainability funds uh, where capital wants to invest in sustainable projects. And they ask us, the public development banks, to show us projects where they can invest together with us. And I see an important role of the public development banks in identifying, spearheading those projects projects in order to, to bring the, the, the whole financial sector into this sustainable uh, development journey. And I think the, the interest of the capital markets is already there through green bonds, green loans, uh, but also through funds that are more and more being uh, formed in order to bring capital into more sustainable projects. So I'm, I'm very positive on that. And I think, as I said, public development banks have a mission here to play and to, to fulfill in order to get this private capital into uh, the transitional projects. Back to you, Lewis. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Gunther. Um, I have, we have, uh, unfortunately, uh, only um, uh, four, four or five minutes uh, left, uh, and I would like to uh, to uh, take this opportunity to uh, relay some questions that we have received from uh, from the uh, the uh, the audience, uh, and uh, perhaps one important one is, of course, uh, what is the the biggest challenge that uh, uh, you can see for the uh, the public uh, development banks. Uh, I think you have answered a little bit of that, but perhaps just as a, as a final round, if there is one thing that we need to consider, uh, either uh, Rosa Maria, uh, 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 Luki or, or Gunther, what would be this, this biggest challenge uh, that you see? Uh, let's perhaps start with, uh, with, uh, with Luki. Okay, it, uh, so going forward. Is... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Going forward, as I said, both are important, both sides in terms of what to do. We're talking about programs and projects and about how to finance it. But I would like to highlight about the going forward about these uh, public development banks. So again, this is my experience dealing with the uh, public development banks. Uh, I think the key success of this public development bank dealing with their clients, their customers, right, is getting the ownership. I think that's kind of a very important it, because in the sense you are dealing with one country and within one country there are a lot of many, for example, ministries, 
some projects are located in, let's say, in remote area. So we have to deal with these local governments. And those local governments, for example, <laughs> so I think this is our homework together. So I am from Mr. Finance. Okay, this is from central government. But even uh, in my job here, that try to coordinate, try to convince, and that's the key. As I said, key is to get the ownership of this the project, this sustainable project, this green project is key of the success of getting the pro uh, the project done okay and this is the homework for all of us the job of for all of us uh, the public development banks the donors as well as we at the government and we're talking about many factions in government ministries ministry of finance ministry of public work ministry of energy and as i said local governments municipalities and there are so many parties involved that you'll be on board with this okay. mission, which is thank, not, thank not you, easy. Um, thank you very much, Luki. Maybe Gunther, I think on the same line, biggest challenge. Biggest challenge, um, we have the NGOs and very ambitious plans from politics, from the EU Commission on the one hand, and uh, our job is to make it practically work. And therefore it's important that everybody listen to each other, also to the practical issues in terms of regulation uh, and really means to bring uh, sustainability uh, to work. And uh, here there needs, uh, we, we need to talk to each other, to listen to each other. Our job is to really uh, to get the execution done uh, from uh, very ambitious plans to really results and the this local, is the, the local challenge. results Th thanks a lot and rosa maria you have the final word you mentioned <laughs> the need to consider the social dimension of uh, of all this so uh, please yes Yes, indeed. Uh, well, from the perspective of a social bank, we think that uh, social issues have to be integrated in the strategies of all PDBs, being green, being social, being uh, general. Um, the, we think that, well, PDBs in general have, um, should need uh, more coordination to build on the complementarities, as I said, and also we have a very important role to play to crowd in private sector funds to uh, very specific projects with a high social impact and green impact that otherwise will not be possible. We have also a responsibility at local level since more of the strain on the private finances are felt at local level because the municipalities are the ones that have to uh, cater uh, for the provision of uh, basic uh, social services that are under restraint for migration flows, for the sanitary crisis. So we have a very important role to play and fill in the gap uh, at the municipal level. All in all, um, the, my, to sum up, I would say that social and green have to go together in the strategies of uh, PDBs and we have to set the standards for the private sector to also uh, come Thank along you. for a sustainable development model. Thank you very, very much, Rosa Maria. Well, look, uh, we, we said the key words, I mean, participation, coordination, ownership, concern with uh, social dimensions of all these policies, of course, achieving the SDGs and fighting uh, climate change with an important role for public development banks. I would like to uh, thank you for your participation in this uh, panel and thanks uh, for the organizers uh, for having this uh, very uh, rich discussion. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Thank you uh, goodbye, Rosa. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Louis. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Good to see you. Good afternoon from Jakarta. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.